All right, ladies and gentlemen, y'all already know what time it is, man. If you like the video, like the video, subscribe for more daily 2K content. And uh, first, we got to put a call out to each and every one of our gym stars. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Jay Easy, a.k.a. Fresh from the Barbershop, BKA the People's Champ, coming to you live with another video, man. Listen to me, man. A lot of stuff to talk about, a little bit of time to talk about it in, man. But look, first things first. We gotta ask y'all a question. We gotta we gotta do our comparison. And uh, today, man, we're gonna start off with a very special tweet by one Darrell Reeves that says, uh, "Darrell Reeves shows a picture of Devontae Adams running right by Richard Sherman. Uh, look like Sherman Sherman about to stumble or something like that. This is what he's afraid of to face. Every, this is what he's afraid to face every snap. The fear of getting beaten man to man coverage every snap, every play. The fact he doesn't travel." as a cornerback is lame. I agree with that. Uh, let me see, accept, accept the challenge. He means A-C-C-E-P-T, accept the challenge uh, as the best and shut Adams down the entire game. Do it for the teammates. Do it for the game of football. Stop hiding in a cover three zone. It's lonely out here. Um, it's, only, it's lonely on the island. And he's talking about Reavers Island, which he was called his whole career. Everybody already know that Reavers Island is a lonely place, man. Let me show y'all something, man. Somebody put out a graphic. 2009, this is what he did, man. Which he got drafted, I think he got drafted in 2007. This is what Rivas did in 2009. Andre Johnson, four catches, 34 yards. Randy Moss, four catches. He was on the New England Patriots. This is Randy Moss at his height. When they were, when, I think that might have been the undefeated season right there. 24 yards, he got a touchdown on it. Uh, Justin Gage, Tennessee, 30, uh, 44 catches, 37 yards. Marcus Colston, two catches, 33 yards. Ted Ginn, two catches, 57 yards. T.O., your boy T.O., T.O. Terrell Owens, three catches, 13 yards. Lou Murphy, four catches, 58 yards. Uh, Devon Best, four catches, 18 yards. Michael Sims Walker, he was tough back in the day. Three three catches, 49 yards, and a, I mean, and a, a touchdown. Oh, he caught a pick on Randy Moss, my bad. Uh, let me see. Randy Moss again, five catches, 34 yards, and gave up a touchdown. Steve Smith, one catch, five yards, and picked it off two times against him. T.O. again, three catches, 31 yards, and uh, he picked it off against him. Antonio Bryant, who, who was tough at that point in time from Tampa Bay, two catches, 22 yards, and he picked it off. Roddy White, two catches, 16 yards, and uh, nothing. Reggie Wayne, three catches, 33 yards, and uh, Chad Ochocinco, I guess it was a DNP, uh, DNP, um, CD, I guess. But what, anyway, I'm saying all that to ask y'all, who y'all taking, man? Y'all taking Richard Sherman? Or you taking Darrell Reeves? Damn it, I say Re a Richard Zone. Or Reeves Island. I'm going to tell you like this, man. It really depends because I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and say that if you can play man, you can play anything. Some people say playing man is, is, is easier than playing zone because in zone, you have to know what's going on. Uh, one fan made a ridiculous ass statement about well, if you're playing zone, you're playing the man that's in your zone. This is not basketball, my guy. When you're playing zone in football, so you would fail the test right off the bat. When you're playing zone in football, you're coming in, you're playing the guy that's in front of you. You, you might be bumping him, but you have to see what's going on around you. So you might trail him or carry him to the next zone, but then you also have to get back and get underneath or do whatever. So cover three is not as easy as, as you would think it is. And man, maybe e man, the concept of man is easier than the concept of cover three or any type of zone, right? But playing man is infinitely more difficult than playing the actual zone. Once you get the concept down, it's it's it should be just easy. But we saw Nandi Asamoah go from a man style defense in Oakland and go to Philly had to play a zone style defense. He just was never the same. And now uh, you thought that Philly was going to be good because they had all the good. They had they had some really good corners that year, but Nani Asma, while he just could not get get into that zone or, or figure out how to play the zone, and he just wouldn't be, wasn't able to play it well, and it looked like he was getting burned over and over. So I'm not saying by any stretch of the imagination that zone defense, the concept, learning the concept of zone, is easier, but. I just feel like you can't call yourself the best if you're not defending the best. Uh, Prime is, they call Prime and, and Rod Woodson and Charles Woodson and guys like that, Pat Pete and all those the best because they're taking away, like some people say they take away a whole side of the field. No, they're taking a the player out of the game. So, but they're saying Richard Sherman taking away a whole side of the field, which is definitely not the case. It's the boundary side. But anyway, uh, y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comments. Uh, 100 drafts out of 100 drafts, I'm taking Darrell Reavers, though. I'm not even going to lie to you. We're going to put our defense around him. We're going to ride for it. And there's so many other, like, Sherman is not getting picked first in any in anybody's draft, is what I'm saying. 
So he's a though he's a really 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 good corner. It, he I don't think anybody even puts him up there as the best. I mean I guess you can look at numbers and if all you look at is numbers is one thing. But anyway, I don't talk too long about this man. Check it out. There was a yesterday. There was a VC glitch that was going around. And uh, two NBA 2K Intel just says, look, go to Asia, play red ball, red ball, blue ball, score once, be on the winning team, and then you would get 50,000 VC and all the rewards every time you did it. All right? This is what was happening. People were doing it in Asia. They were doing it. They were trying to get it done on the East Coast and all this stuff. Hey, man, before it even started on the East Coast, the event is back, but mysteriously it's been patched. I don't know if it was hard patch or soft patch, but on Martin Luther the King Day, they patched an event. They found a way to patch the event. 2K, this is something that we talk about with 2K all the time, man. Why is it that we can we can always patch things? Anything that affects the bottom line or gives people free VC or gives people this or that or whatever, that get that gets patched immediately. But if it's something that affects the game, like y'all talking about the behind the back patch and this and that, we, we don't get that patch in a timely manner. Like those patches go on the schedule, but the patches that affect the bottom line, they come see, this is why people feel the way that they do feel about 2K. Because it's obviously not the fact that y'all cannot fix the game and patch the game and do the things that need to be done. It's that you don't do it. You won't do it. Like y'all call some people in on Martin Luther King Day to patch this this atrocity, but we've been waiting on this other patch for the last two weeks. Now I have a good idea that the patch, like I said, the last patch came at the end of January, which was the last week of January. Next week should be the last week of January. So it's either gonna come tomorrow or it's probably gonna come on the 28th is what I'm guessing. So, you know, cause they, I mean, they got a lot of processes that they have to go through. They, they had to get approved, they had to go out. Then Xbox and uh, PlayStation got approved and then they can push it out or whatever. So, I mean, obviously nobody's testing the patches because every time they patch something, something get break, gets broken. But they just test the, they test the patches in the fact that it doesn't upset the network and that it doesn't do anything to the integrity of the game So, um, or, or the whole game and system. So that's how they really test those. It is what it is, man. Like I said, it just astounds me that they can patch something on a holiday, but we don't patch things. Like, they can't push this other patch through. And obviously, they've been soft patching stuff the whole time because we know that they've uh, soft patched the hop step. The hop step has definitely been soft patched. It, it used to be you could hop step and, and do whatever you wanted to hop step your life away. And you can still do it, but it's just not as effective. It is as effective as it was, but it's not as predictable as it was. So, a lot of times when you go in there, you try to hop step, you're going to go and do a foo-foo layup or he's just gonna go straight up with it, or you're gonna be like, dang, I didn't think he was gonna go straight up with it. I tried to do the hop step and stuff like that. So it's it's getting more difficult to predict when you're going to do the hop step, but the hop step is there. It's still there, but they did change it up a little bit. Um, and that's what I'm saying, like stuff like that. All of this stuff is in preparation for the NBA 2K League, man. Every single bit of it. They're gonna change this stuff because they don't want, they don't want, they wanna see a more team oriented game. And they know as long as that explosive behind the back and the hop step are in the game in its current iteration, you, you can still play, you can right now play one man basketball. And you can still play one man basketball. Most people are playing the two man basketball where they're setting the screens and stuff like that. If they wanna do something, they need to make the screens a little bit less sticky. I, I can't tell if they have because I don't really set screens like that. And when I do set screens, as long as the person that's dribbling isn't dribbling like a dickhead and they're giving me time to set the screen and get a solid screen set and then they're leading the person into the screen, I'm telling you, I knock the person down almost every time. I'm not gonna be one of those people that's gonna chase people with a screen. I'm gonna come set the screen, I'm gonna hold the screen. If you're a point guard and you're not able to figure out how to use the screen that I'm setting, that's on you. I'm not gonna chase nobody with no screen. That's just, that's just not me. Because at that, at that, at that point, you're not being a point guard. You're just spamming moves, hoping that somebody get caught on the screen. And that's not the type of gameplay that I'm for. If you are a guard that says, okay, the screen is right here. I'm going to lead him into it and then deceive him off the screen. That's what I rock with. But just people that just keep doing moves over and over, I go to the corner and you can figure it out your damn self. I don't, I don't play like that. But hey, it is what it is. Like I said though, they passed the hop step. Soft patch the hop step, obviously. You, you guys may have noticed that. And um, the behind the back is still in this current iteration. That's going to take a hard patch. But, hey, I'm sure that's going to happen uh, pretty soon. And uh, we're going to see how that goes, man. Hey, and last but not least, man, 
we got NBA 2K Labs did an awesome video on Intimidator. And pretty much what they're showing you is Intimidator is a must-have badge. Uh, they're showing it on the different levels. At bronze, you get a three, a four, almost 4%. Uh, it, everything goes down almost 4%. Silver, 6%. Gold, 10%. Almost 15% on Hall of Fame. Now, then they did also say that that this is what they said. It is still possible to make a 100% smothered layup even with Hall of Fame Intimidator. So we can't get mad at that. I don't know why that's something like that is in the game. 100% smothered should mean that you miss. But hey, if you can get a contest and it adds about 15% to your contest, hey, that, that's something that, that, that I'm, I'm rocking with. So I'm going to put Intimidator on Hall of Fame every single time. Obviously, you know that people make way less, way fewer layups on you when you have Intimidator on, but at the same time, you just don't know. Like I said, 100% smothered, and some of them still go in. But you just don't know how it's going to impact it. And like I said, man, that's that's pretty much we all we got for y'all today, man. So they, they're pretty much just telling you that Intimidator is a must-have badge. You must put it on. Um, and, and put it on as high as you can go. If you got one of those bills where you can only put it on like bronze, it's still worth putting it on bronze to drop somebody's joints by 4%. But if that's the only badge you got, which I don't understand why you would make a bill where you only got one defensive badge, and then expect to play defense because you got stick skill the game don't work like that. You you gotta be better. You 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 like you can't be you you it's not possible for you to be good enough to be able to play with one bass. But hey, maybe some people can. It is what it is. But hey, if you if you think that a bronze clamps is able is is able to make you play, this is what you're gonna be looking like right here. You're gonna be looking at somebody run right by you. Y'all let me know down in the comments what y'all think, man. Uh do y'all think that intimidators a must-have bass? Do y'all think that the shirt is fire? You know, all that good stuff, it will be in the store and all that. But look, and y'all let me know who y'all going with, man. If you had one person to go with, Richard Sherman or Darrell Reeves. Damn it, I say Richard Sherman or Darrell Reeves. Like I said, Richard Sherman had an awesome year, um, a couple of good years. But I mean, when you got that type of front seven in front of you, Peyton Manning couldn't even pass the ball this year. Like, it didn't matter who you put over there. That defense was getting after it. And, um, and to be honest with you, I mean, with the type of defense they had with that front seven, and you got Cam and Earl behind you, and that's two of the fastest, hardest hitting safeties in the league at that time. And then you had uh, Brandon Browner and Thurman on the other side, man. Like, that, that's that's tough to deal with for anybody, man. But hey, I do applaud Richard Sherman for this. He found what he does well, and he don't try to do nothing outside of his game. You can't get mad at that. He can't play man to man to save his life because he don't have the speed. I'm not saying that his technique wouldn't be it, but he, he just don't have that type of speed. Right and right ran right by him. Julio Jones ran right by him. All this stuff, like you always, you, you're going to, you will see a lot more of that. But find what you're good at. That's what a lot of more people need to do in life. Find what you're good at, stick to it. Don't let anybody get you outside of your zone. No pun intended. And uh, just do what you can do, man, because hey, hey, Steph Curry, don't say, you don't see Steph Curry trying to dunk on nobody. You don't see LeBron trying to shoot a whole bunch of threes. You don't see James Harden. That joker went one for 17 last night. That joke was great. But uh, but you don't see Trey Young trying to dunk on people. Those guys, you those guys are professionals because they do what's what their game caters to. They cater to what their game, you know, what's inside of their game. They stay inside of it. They don't let, let nobody get them out of it. And all of that. I just don't feel like you can call yourself the best or or even talk about being one of the best when you're not guarding the best. You know, you're not going against the best. How can you call yourself the best? You're, but you are the best zone corner in the game. I guess you could say that, but is that even a thing? I don't know, man. Like I said, it sounds like hating, regardless of how you say it. Because in this society, if you say one person is better than the other one, then people take that as you saying the other person is not good at all. But Richard Sherman is a very good corner. He plays good run support. He plays the hell out of that zone. You're not getting open on him. And when they throw the ball right to him, he, he gets those picks. I mean, it's just like the last two, the last two picks he got, they threw the ball right to him. Had nothing to do with the coverage. It was it was bad, both bad throws by the quarterback. Some people would say that the defense had something to do with those bad throws. I'm not one of those people. But if I had to pick a zone corner in the in the in the three scheme, he probably would be the first one. But if I'm picking a corner, just drafting a corner that we're gonna mold and we're gonna try to make a defense around, he's not gonna be that guy. I'm just being real with you. It just, it just is what it is. You can be the best at something that you do, just like I cited Namdi Asimawa, the best zone, the best man corner in the league at that time. Couldn't play the zone to save his life. 
So you can be the best at one thing. He should have stayed and been the best at what he was at. Anyway, man, I got to get up out of here, man. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what y'all think down in the comment section. I ain't hating on Rich. He doing all this thing, man. He make more money than I do, and, and he's about to go to the Super Bowl. He, he probably would respond to this, but he got a Super Bowl to prepare for. But I'm going to tell you what. Well, you better hope that damn song over the top of you in this one because the cheetah and them guys right there, you ain't gonna be able to, they ain't going to be able to hide you this week, my boy. Let me tell you that. <laughs> Next week, it ain't no hide. You guys are going somebody that's fast as hell, boy. That's all I can tell you. Anyway, anyway, like I said, Godspeed the Rich, man. He a, good, he a cool dude. And if he was in Atlanta, of course I'd want him. I like the bravado. I like how he talk. I'm just mad because he ain't on my damn team, all right? And I caught a suck. So I'm, I'm contractually obligated to talk shit about anybody that ain't on my team. Y'all know how it is, man. I don't like nobody that was on my team. But if Rich was on my team, I'd be calling all y'all bitches and telling y'all, God damn it, Rich the best corner in the league. Leave my boy alone. And that's how the 49ers quit guys going at it right now, man. You're supposed to defend your people, man. I'm supposed to just sit here and objectively talk about the news, and I am objectively talking about it. Not a very good, good, good zone. Uh, not, not a good man corner in any, any way, but a very, but the best zone corner probably to ever do it. Darrell Reeves, we don't know. He never plays zone, so who knows? Maybe that's why he never plays zone. Hmm. I'm gone, man. Y'all holler at me. Peace.